final NFL football game is in the books. What about the Torrance Winter Sports scene? Is your team a saint or just a runner-up? The South Girls soccer team hosts El Segundo in a rainy game. Do they get soaked by the Eagles? And the third place Knights try to take advantage of the fourth place Bishop Amat Lancers on the hardwood. North and Torrance wrestling squads took the Mac before league finals who got penned. Plus the Lady Warriors try to equalize the Lady Huskies on the basketball court. A tall tale was afoot the Hickory Elementary campus last week. You gotta check out this clip to find out. From the field of the court, we've got you covered. Who dat? It's a sports desk. That's what it starts right now. Welcome to Sports Desk. I'm your host, Bonnie Prickett. I gotta say, what a football game that was played last week. There were some exciting matchups in Torrance, too. Let's go to the hardwood. The four-court press is on for the top spot in the Delray League as the Bishop Montgomery Knights play the Bishop Amat Lancers. Only one game behind the Lancers are nipping at the Knights' heels for a secure spot in the third place, which, of course, takes them directly to CIF. Sports Desk reporter Brendan Ortega brings us a scene from the Knights' court. With only a few games left to go before the CIF playoff, Bishop Montgomery battled Bishop Amont at the Knights Gymnasium in front of a pumped up crowd. Lawrence King got off to a fast start for the Knights, first with a nice offensive rebound in the lay-in, and Kyle Reed finds Lawrence King once again, dropping the rock in for two more. The Knights defense would get going as well. Daniel Rodriguez is forced to miss the layup, and Bishop Amont big man Adam Balderas is tied up by Lamont Murray. The Knights would do a great job of forcing turnovers throughout the game. Tyler Harvey forces another turnover right here. Taking the ball all the way, he's fouled. He'll go to the line and make both free throws. Alfonso Lester gets things going from the perimeter. He drops the three off a nice friendly roll. Lester would have three three-point baskets on the day. Tyler Harvey finds Lamont Murray. He sinks it from the same exact spot. That gives the Knights a 13-9 lead going into the second period. Bishop Amont's Daniel Rodriguez brings the Lancers within two with a quick move for the easy lay-in. And Lawrence King will come right back for the Knights, getting two of his 11 first half points. Knights guard Isaiah Turner gets another steal for Bishop Montgomery. He takes it all the way and that extends the Knights lead to six. Tyler Harvey gave the Knights a little extra boost going into halftime with a three from the corner. And he caps off the half with a nice move to the basket off a great pass from Leon Jacobs, giving the Knights a 36-19 lead at half. Fast forward now to the fourth quarter, Bishop Amont would make a late run led by Daniel Rodriguez who converts the lay-in and gets the foul. Rodriguez misses his free throw but only to be saved by Alumba Ekbo who cuts the lead now down to seven with about six minutes left to go in the game. Lawrence King would help the Knights get their lead back into double digits, gets the rebound and fouled hard. He'd go to the line and sink both free throws. King would finish with the game high 21 points. Kyle Reed forces the turnover for the Knights and that would set up Alfonso Lester for the final three-point basket, and that sets up Tyler Harvey for the final bucket of the game. And that would do it. Bishop Montgomery prevails over Bishop Amont, 67 to 56. The Knights get a much needed victory that brings them into a tie for second place in the Delray League standings. Coach Doug Mitchell knows that the win could not have come at a better time for his young team. Happy with that. I thought the, the, the young guys came out with a lot of poise, and it was the first time I'd really seen that, like you say, a big game. We look like we really functioned well, so I, I think you hit it. I think it was the key to the game. A big factor to the Knights' victory was the play of Lawrence King, who led the Knights with 21 points. King credits the win to the team's great game preparation with their coaches. Oh, before the game, um, I watched a tape and everything and see how they played. They played back. They played back. So I was just, you know, every time I saw an open and get to the basket, go hard, be under ballot. So if a teammate came open, pass it to him. If not, take the shot. Coach Mitchell is never shy to admit when his team plays below par. Tonight, his young team made their veteran coach proud. Uh, I, I thought we had a good team defensive effort. I thought a lot of guys played with defensively. I thought if we would have done a little bit better job rebounding on the defensive end, it would have been even easier for us, but I'm always going to find something wrong. Tonight, while Bishop committed their fair share of errors, they did get a good consistent effort from Lawrence King, who led the way on offense, 21 points for the Knights. Eight different players also scored for the Knights, and if they get a consistent effort on offense and defense, they'll be looking good for the playoffs. Reporting for the Sports Desk, I'm Brandon Ortega.
And thanks out to Brandon Ortega for the breakdown. The final score again, the Knights 67 and the Lancers 56. Lots of different guys contributed, but the king of the court was Lawrence King, led the scoring with 21 points, and Tyler Harvey got 10 points. Let's take a look at the current standings. The Delray League race is a close one. Sarah is on top of the Delray League and Division 3A as well. Cathedral is in second place for now. And at 4-3, and three, the Knights are currently in third. And at 3-3, three and three, it's not over yet. Bishop Amat is right behind him. And LaSalle is at the bottom at no wins, six losses. The Pioneer League standings. It's no surprise again this season that Centennial is on top at 8-0. El Segundo and North Lockhorns at 5-3 overall records in the league. Lawndale sees a possible chance at CIF in fourth. The Tartars are looking at a 2-6 record at the moment. The Spartans didn't finish winless this season with a 1-7 overall Pioneer League record. A quick look at the Bay League has Losinger on top, followed by Peninsula and Redondo vying for number two and three spots. Rounding out fourth is at Mira Costa. The West Torrance Warriors are at two and six this season. PVC is the bottom of the pack with an zero and eight record. The City Girls basketball teams are in pretty good shape this season. South is currently atop the Pioneer League with North right behind them. The tiebreaker will be played this week. And yes, we'll of course have the highlights on the sports desk. Centennial is at 5-3, holding third place. Torrance, do you guys remember how the Torrance High Tartars only had seven girls on their varsity roster at the start of the season? Great finish with a 4-4 four four record and a chance to get into the playoffs still. El Segundo and Londo fill out the bottom of the list. The girls' Bay League race is close with the surefire winner in Miracosta. PV and Redondo are slotted for second and third either way. West might see uh, some extra play in the postseason with a 3-5 and five Bay League record. Peninsula and Losinger are last on that line. A quick shot at the Delray League has the Lady Knights in second place with a 5-2 record. That is it for prep basketball. We'll have the North and South Girls Showdown next week. After the break, things get a little sucky.